Hi, I'm Chris with Container Bicycles and today I uh, wanted to go over a bike we're pretty stoked about, the Orbea Rayon. This bike is a two-niner. It has what is being considered modern two-niner geometry, which is long, low, and slack. The Rayon comes in with um, an adjustable head angle. The standard, what they call low head angle, is 65.5, and then with the flip of a chip, you can drop it down to 65. Um, the seat angle is pretty progressive as well. The seat angle comes in in the normal position or the low position of 76 and steepens to 76.5. So with this geometry, um, the geometry that the, the Rayon has, you know, you, the, the steep seat angle uh, positions the rider a little further forward on the pedals, helps with climbing also in pedal, because of the pedal position, but also because you keep the front wheel weighted a bit more, prevents the front wheel from uh, you know, coming off the ground in, on technical climbs and in switchbacks. The head angle, I mean, what can you say about that? Uh, slack head angles, uh, it's just the angle of attack when going down rough terrain. It just makes that front wheel roll up and over things incredibly well. Something else that's happening with this bike that uh, is just starting to hit the media is something that Transitions has actually been working on. They fall within the same geometry specs, but one thing they've done different is they've reduced the fork rake. Standard on most bikes is a 51 uh, millimeter offset on the fork. This bike has 44, and I believe Transition is doing the same. This changes your trail measurement. Your, your trail uh, is somewhat considered your stabilizing aspect of your front end geometry. The more trail you have, the more stable it can feel. Yet at the same time, it, at slow speeds can make the, the wheel on steep climbs feel or have less of a tendency to flop side to side. So it's kind of a best of both worlds scenario. Something designed into this bike, it's got a pretty unique frame design. It's an asymmetrical frame. It's got a reinforcing element to the left side of the shock. And this has allowed them to achieve a lower standover height and also maintain frame stiffness and integrity. Another aspect to the frame design, and more the suspension rather, is the fact that the frame has been designed to use both the air and a, a coiled shock. It comes standard with the uh, new DPX2, which is a new piggyback reservoir shock that's been created uh, by Fox this year. It has an Evol air can. The bike uh, also can come with a coil. Um, so if you really you know, need, want, the capability of a baby downhill bike with the 65 degree head angle and uh, the buttery you know smoothness of a coil that nice linear feel and the super soft off the top suspension put a coil on it and you know you're ready for a whole different level of train the real begins uh, with the m10 model uh, the price for that bike is $49.99 that bike is spec'd with eagle gx um, the DPX2 shock, uh, it comes with the Fox Performance 36 fork and pretty solid build kit all in all. Um, not a whole lot you'd really want to change. The M10 is, is becoming the, you know, sort of the go-to bike in the shop for the guys that are riding this. It represents a really good value, $4,999. It's a hell of a lot of bike for, for that amount of money. And uh, again, if you, you wanna tweak some things, there is the option within the Mayo program. Uh, the next model is the uh, Team. The Team is a bit of an up-spec. Uh, you start getting into things, uh, the better shock, the X2. Um, higher quality wheels, carbon bars, things you would expect once you start jumping up into that price range. And then, if that's not enough, uh, another stock build is the Limited, and again, it just steps everything up another notch and gets you closer to, you know, kind of that dream build situation. Uh, the bikes come in three sizes, small, medium, large, and XL. You know, I really think with this, this brand coming from Spain, um, it's not a U.S. brand. It's not one of those brands that are on the tip of your tongue when it comes to thinking of a very capable 2 er Enduro Park trail bike. Um, but it really should be something for consideration. I was pretty amazed at how 
how well it climbed, how efficient it was, yet it pointed straight downhill in some rough stuff, and it it's fast, it's amazing. It's really smooth in the chatter, very stable, yet it's playful and lively when you start pushing and pumping in corners. If you're thinking of bikes like the Trek Slash, the Higher Tower LT, bikes in that category, this definitely should be on your your list of a test for a test ride. These days, so often this category of bike <clears throat> seems to fall in one of two directions, either a very big aggressive trail bike or something bordering on a baby downhill bike. I think this bike feels falls somewhere in between. Ride it all day long on the trails, can handle aggressive terrain, eight hour epic sessions, no problem. Take it to the bike park, push hard, it's gonna be fine there as well. And it really excels and likes steep, chunky terrain. And then there's been some really good reviews that have, have popped up lately. I mean, I've been riding this bike pretty solidly for the past few weeks and uh, I hadn't read the reviews, but it was really consistent. What's been said pretty much mirrored my, my thoughts and my ideas about how the bike was working and performing. Check out some of those uh, those reviews, uh, the latest one was um, the Bike Bible of Bike for 2018. Great review there. And then other than that, most all of the um, reviews of it have been during their press launch uh, in the Pyrenees last, I believe, fall. So some good information there. I think those first impressions are also very accurate. They were consistent across the board, which speaks well to you know how well the bike is how well the bike rides. If you have any questions, please contact contact us at the shop or email us at info at contenderbicycles.com. Uh, please like and share the, the video. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter as well. Uh, thanks for watching. We hope to be doing more of this type of thing in the future and uh, just provide some good content and information on products we sell.